The number of people forcefully displaced has continued to rise over the last 10 years and is now reaching 18 million. To make matters even worse, the COVID-19 pandemic has sparked a crisis of global magnitude and infodemic, a word coined by the WHO, has become a buzzword. These culminating crises have further aggravated the refugee situation. In 2020, more than ever, reliable, unbiased information can save lives. Hello and welcome to day seven of the DW Academy's first virtual conference. Remember, the theme is communication, engagement and accountability in crisis. My name is Wendy Komwaura. And I am Eddie Micah Jr. We are your host throughout the virtual conference. Now, it's been great so far having you guys. Uh, we have been traveling from country to country, Wanjiku, just to find out what different people, different organizations have been doing, especially during this uh, pandemic to help curb refugee crisis or to help ensure that refugees and migrants alike are in the best of conditions. Yesterday, we traveled to the DRC, where a team of UNHCR introduced us to their work with IDP and the host communities. That's right, Eddie. And today we're excited because we're traveling to Lebanon and Kenya, where we will have two organizations talking about the role of community media in COVID-19 pandemic. And they're waiting behind the scenes, keen to share and engage you in the conversation. And I have to say, they're not the only ones waiting. I already see Barnabas Samuel who says, I can't wait for this session. And I hope that he too will take part in the conversation. <laughs> for sure. I also myself cannot wait. Now, if you're here with us for the first time, then this is how to join our Q&A with the experts. All you have to do is to please go to the Q&A section of today's discussion and type in your question. Yeah, we'll do our best to answer as many as possible in the last 20 minutes of the firm so we will be waiting for you that's right eddie now let's get the ball rolling kamji is a media platform run by young journalists in the refugee camps of lebanon through online media kamji aims to give the refugees the necessary voice to communicate with the public yep well, I just really have to alert uh, those tuned in that uh, this presentation will partially be in Arabic, but it's all good. We have you sorted. Uh, you have to switch to the English translator or the Spanish one for Spanish speakers. Translation is only possible when you're using the mobile app or the desktop app. OK, now we are joined now by Nasser Al Jazari, who is the project advisor and his team of community reporters. So hello, Nasir. Tell us what you got. Hi, hi. Hi. I hope you can hear me well. We can uh, hear you, Nasir. And we exactly, exactly. These are uh, Omar, Rayan, and Samih, uh, part of the reporters team in Kamji. And uh, we are very happy to join this conference uh, and be part of it uh, also. Um, uh, yes, uh, as you introduced already, I'm working as a project advisor on the Kamji project. Uh, and uh, without wasting many words, I would like to ask uh, the admin team to play the video that will introduce uh, Kanji uh, visually. Uh, please, if we can play the video. Um, yes, uh, I hello, hello. 
Uh, yeah. Yes, sorry, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. We can, uh, yeah. Uh, I said, uh, I hope uh, everyone could see the video clearly. Uh, this is basically what, what Kamji is uh, uh, today, uh, briefly, uh, but uh, we also wanted to share uh, the information about how uh, uh, Kamji uh, started, uh, what, what was the goal of Kamji project, uh, and uh, uh, what, how it uh, developed since then. And uh, if I may here uh, ask the admin team again to uh, present the portfolio, please, to play the portfolio. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, the, um, the second I need to open from my side, uh, and here we go. Um, so, uh, Kanji is a, is a young uh, refugee giving their community a voice, as, as it was mentioned before uh, from the host. Uh, um, Kanji is a, is a young uh, collective of citizen journalists uh, who create genuine content uh, from the refugee camps uh, in Lebanon and also the community, refugee communities. And the objective here is to transfer the reality of refugees with the aim of influencing and uh, giving the community a voice. Uh, through this media platform, uh, we tell the extraordinary stories of people who have been forced to live as refugees, uh, portraying their dreams, successes, and challenges. Uh, Kamji Project is run by the Arab Resources Center for Popular Art, or alternatively named uh, as Al Jana Center, and uh, supported by BW Academy and GIZ ZFT. Uh, please, uh, next uh, slide. So today, uh, Kamji consists of uh, 18 young reporters, uh, uh, young uh, girls and boys, uh, delivering daily stories uh, to their audience through uh, uh, the platforms of uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Um, and next slide, please. Uh, uh, currently, Kanji has uh, over 120,000 followers, uh, mainly, uh, sorry, no, okay, uh, yeah, the 100,000 followers are mainly from, from Lebanon, but also uh, from the region, from the Arab region, uh, but also we have international audience among these followers uh, uh, who can who can speak uh, Arabic because uh, the content is uh, is in Arabic. Um, yeah, and some of some of the content that Kanji produces today has reached already uh, three million views. Uh, for example, uh, next slide, please. Um, and uh, around uh, one thousand four hundred stories uh, have been produced in the past three years and uh, stories, uh, speaking of video stories, so it's all uh, video content on refugees, uh, regardless of their gender, nationality, or religion. Uh, next slide, please. Um, here, we would like to present uh, a few uh, formats that, uh, that are uh, um, uh, regular uh, formats in, in the Kanji production. Uh, when I say formats, it's, these are video formats to tackle different issues in different uh, video formats. And uh, one of these, uh, one of these uh, formats is uh, box box formats where the reporter goes through the refugee camps and uh, uh, give people a chance to raise their concerns and uh, issues related to them. Next slide, please. Uh, Kamji platform produces uh, lots of portrays on people, uh, these personal stories of refugees uh, uh, are usually uh, are uh, very interesting and challenging uh, and uh, they are uh, among the favorite stories uh, on the platform. Um, we also have a format called trending, this is a multimedia format putting popular topics of the social media in a week's review. Next slide please. Uh, the Roof Show. This is our comedy show uh, where uh, two hosts on the roof uh, present uh, the latest news on refugees from the camp, uh, but in a sarcastic way. 
so it's a comedy show that is also uh, very popular. It uh, achieved also uh, lots of success even during the Corona uh, period. Uh, um, and we will see some uh, samples maybe later from, uh, from uh, that uh, format. Uh, the next format is a poster. It's a video diary format where the presenter records her impressions on writers, poets, and artists, and tells their short biographies uh, while walking through the camp. Uh, uh, it's, uh, this format is part of the educational formats uh, that are presented on Kamji platform because Kamji uh, uh, considers uh, uh, or gives a big importance to the educational uh, aspect of uh, of its production to uh, also um, educate in a way its um, its uh, followers and uh, viewers. Next slide, please. Um, then the show, The Essence. It's an educational studio format. Uh, tackling social and scientific issues and explains them in an entertaining way. Uh, next to it is the message. It's another studio format that sends a message or promote the social issues that relate to current affairs, but always related in a way or in the other to uh, refugees. Um, then, next slide, please. The format Hands. It's an explainer format where only hands, voices, and drawings explain complex subjects that are otherwise uh, difficult to film. So this, is, uh, this was uh, found as an easy way to uh, visually explain complex issues. And next to it is the behind the story format. It's a studio format uh, that explains complicated issues related to the Arab world while trying to compensate on what the young audience didn't learn in school. Uh, next slide, uh, slide please. Uh, the format at the moment is our uh, oral history format, documents unforgettable moments during the refuge from the homeland to Lebanon. So uh, you find here stories of uh, Palestinians, of uh, Syrians, of uh, uh, other nationalities, uh, refugees who came to Lebanon, and they usually tell the story of uh, uh, the beginning of their refuge to Lebanon. Then the format next to it is a reporter. This is our investigative uh, format uh, where important issues around the refugee existence are uh, handled uh, in this uh, investigative uh, format. And the next slide, please. Uh, apart from the formats, uh, Kamji provides the young team with the journalistic skills and knowledge, which allows them to become active and valuable members in the community, uh, able to make a difference. The project aims to provide capacity building and employ young journalists throughout the country to reach out to all refugee communities and give them a voice. And next slide, please. Uh, I hope you're not bored already. We are approaching the end of our uh, portfolio, sorry. Uh, so, uh, also for the self-existence, uh, the project Kanji uh, has uh, various services uh, that they provide to the uh, open market by selling stories, footage, and production services to media outlets, companies, and organizations. Kamji strives to become an independent and self-sustained. Uh, for example, uh, Kamji provides camera crews to uh, media outlets who uh, cannot or do not want to enter the refugee camps uh, and uh, decide to um, commission Kamji with this uh, 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 job, basically. Uh, we also have after working uh, now in our fourth year on this project, we have accumulated a huge amount of uh, pictures and stories. So the video archive of Kanji is a very valuable archive today, uh, documenting uh, life of refugees uh, for the last four years, uh, which can be also provided to uh, media outlets. But also production assistants are offered from Kanji uh, team as a fixer or as a translator or as an editor or cameraman uh, for uh, 
independent or uh, uh, foreign uh, uh, non-local uh, media outlets. Uh, and the last uh, slide, please. Uh, now, the whole project of Kamji is uh, under the management of Aljana. Uh, Aljana is, um, is uh, as I said, it's also known as um, the Arab Resources Center for Popular Arts, uh, commonly known as Aljana. Uh, it was established in the 1990s, so it's 30 years old now. As a local NGO registered in Lebanon, uh, uh, the, the NGO works with the marginalized communities through uh, documenting and enriching uh, the experience and creative contributions and building on them, while at the same time, at the same time, enhancing uh, the capacity of young uh, of youth uh, towards conflict transformation, active learning, and creative expressions. Um, now, uh, uh, Aljana is partnering with DW, as I mentioned before, DW Academy and the GIZ Civil Peace Service on this project. And thank you very much. This was the portfolio that we presented. And I would like to go back to uh, the team to present, uh, to present uh, our members uh, closely. Uh, I hope everyone can see the picture. So if uh, you guys uh, step in and say hello and present yourself shortly, or we do it from there. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll go. Uh, I hope the translation. I'm not sure. Did the translation work, or shall I translate? The... We can. We can't hear you well. We can't hear you very well. It's very. Yeah, translate, but yeah, you can summarize it for us if you can. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's. Uh, she comes from uh, Shatila refugee camp. Uh, and uh, she joined Kamshi uh, almost four years ago, uh, and she's one of the reporters and presenters on Kamshi uh, and a very active uh, member of the platform. Uh, Thank you. Samir. Come closer, please. Thank you very much. Shukran. I am Palestinian. Um, I'm living now in Lebanon. I came after the after the war. It's a big chance for me for the for the camp because I can follow up my studies far from the school. This was uh, Samir. Samir is a Palestinian refugee. Samir. Syria, but when the war started in Syria, he had to become a second time refugee to come uh, to Lebanon, escape to Lebanon, uh, because he dropped out of school and didn't have any chance to uh, continue his school. He decided to join Kamshi at the beginning of the project, and today he is uh, one of the shining stars actually of uh, Kamji, also writing, uh, uh, well, being, being a reporter, but also he's presenting a show and uh, yeah that was me and Omar also <laughs> hello my name is Omar I'm 22 years old I'm from Palestine as well but I used to live in Syria after the war I came to Lebanon in 2018 and the same with Samir. I wanted to continue school. It's a good, it's a good chance for me to come here. I'm with Kamji from the beginning, and I'm very happy about it. Uh, he's uh, similar to Samir's stories. He's also a Palestinian coming from Syria, but during the war, uh, the war in Syria, the latest war now, uh, 
uh, escaped to Lebanon and uh, same thing, couldn't join the school here because of uh, uh, yeah, difficulties with the papers. Uh, so he joined Kanji and uh, that was a major uh, benefit for him uh, to be able to develop uh, his uh, skills uh, and uh, knowledge and uh, he's enjoying being a citizen journalist today presenting a show, uh, he's uh, um, uh, producing also content uh, as a reporter and uh, yeah, similar story. Uh, I think we've reached the time to play a short video now that uh, gives a short compilation of the work these three guys uh, did during the Corona times. The video is subtitled, so uh, I'll please ask the admin team to play the video. Thank you. مشكلتي مع الكمامة ذاتها وكيف عم نتعامل معها هاي الكمامة الطبية بدنا نجرب فيها نطفي الشمعة وهاي كمامة قماش مثل اللي بنشوفهم بالسوق خلينا نجرب نطفي فيها الشمعة من أول مرة القلق والخوف والفوضى بالتفكير اللي عشته بشكل مستمر براسي بوقت الانتظار لبين ما تطلع نتيجتي أنا وماما إنه الناس اللي خلطتهم معقول إذا أنا طلعت إيجابي أكون نقلت لهم الفيروس وبلكي هن خالطوا ناس منعتهم مش كتير منيحة ظل هالصراع خمس أيام لبين ما طلعت النتيجة لن أدعك تستولي على السطح يا هذا الدرع الواقي واحدة من الإجراءات اللي أخذوها بمخيم مار الياس إنه الأطفال ممنوع ينزلوا على الشارع. شو عم تعمل بالشارع؟ راح أجيب لبن. وبعدين؟ أروح على البيت. تعرف ليش عم بيخلوا الأولاد يقعدوا بالبيت؟ مشان مرض كورونا. يلا روح. انتبه حالك. خطر لي أعمل شغلة لنتأكد إذا في أولاد بالشارع أو لا. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, Nasir and your team for that introduction to your project. I definitely want to get down and dirty and get to see everything that you have on all your platforms. Um, I also just want to point out that Muthi, who is one of the viewers, is asking how they can take uh, part, how they can join Kanji. But if you have been in this conference long enough, you know that you will get your answers through the app and you can interact also with each and every person from Kamji again through the app. So please make use of that and we will have a QA and a session. So leave your comments there and we'll be back to them. Yeah, you're right, Wanjiku. I'm definitely looking forward to the QA and a part because I have a couple of questions. I think just like you said, it's such a great platform that gives, uh, you know, the space and the room for uh, refugees to to get uh, their voices out there to be heard and i think that is definitely very key but yeah we'll get to that hopefully the last 20 minutes of everything but from lebanon wanjiku well guess where we're heading we're heading all the way to the country you're from for those of you that didn't know wanjiku is from kenya so that's nice we're heading over to the kakuma refugee camp in the northwest of kenya uh, here film aid kenya works with a team of refugees to produce an audio program called Sikika, that's uh, all the way from the camp for the camp. So that's key to know, from the camp for the camp. Yes, and now we are joined by Mordecai Odera, who is Film AIDS Programs Director. He will introduce us to two of Sikika content creators. I am looking forward as well to this session. Mordecai, over to you. Thank you so much. Um, we're also excited to be here. Um, this uh, afternoon uh, and I uh, will first uh, thank so much uh, DW Academy for setting up this conference. This is the second time that Film Aid is participating in this conference. I'm joined with my colleagues straight from Kakuma Refugee Camp uh, 
uh, uh, Mary and Akune, and in a short while, they'll be able to say hi to you. But to begin with, we'll show a short eight minute video that speaks about uh, the Sitskika project and how we were able to produce content amid a COVID-19 pandemic uh, um, outbreak. Thank you. I am a refugee from Gambela, Ethiopia. It has been like 14 years now in Kenya since I left my country. I am a content generator for the Sekika radio program. I'm a content generator. I do field interview. I do a research on the topic to be covered. I collect a story from the community and then I research and I also produce from uh, there I edit and also I do reporting. So I'm also a reporter and also an editor. Okay. What drives me to the to participate in the Kika program is I wanted to work close with the community. I felt like the the voice of the refugee and the host community around here is not hard, is not there. So I felt like, you know, I have that responsibility. I should take that responsibility to be a voice of the people, of the refugee and those community that are living in Kakuma and Kalobi. You know, when you work together to closely to the community, there's a, a lot of stories. I wanted to be that voice telling the stories to the community or to the society or to the whole world. So it is like through me, their voice is going to be heard because I'm going to tell their story. Uh, continuing or uh, delivering the services uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic while other organizations suspended their activity is a very, very, very big decision that we made as a content generator. What, what motivates us to do that is that, you know, uh, the, the, inform the information that we are delivering is a crucial information that is life-saving information. We felt like we could not, we could not just sit there and relax. So we should do something. If we could have relaxed and also suspend this program and sit there, uh, all those very important information that we have been uh, fasting, we have been giving out to the community would have not been there and the, the community would have not known the intels of the COVID-19, the effect and also some of the important things that they need to know. How, how did we, uh, we continue? Uh, before COVID-19, we have a total of 12, and we usually work at 12 in number. Because we are 12, we, are, we divided ourselves into, 12, into three groups. Some members will come on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then the other two days will reserve for editorial meeting. Before we go to the office, we wash our hands twice in the main gates and also in our gate office. When your hand dry, you need to sanitize again when you reach inside the office, the room. And in our office, we have three tables. And therefore, they have uh, located one table for each person to avoid overcrowding in the office. Then the, the, other, the other person now will be set at the corner. Plus now the, the person who will be there, maybe the, our, our uh, content development uh, coordinator uh, to be with us there. So we are going to be five and we make sure that we are wearing our face mask every day and everywhere we are. 
So that is how we cope with uh, COVID-19. So maybe we can start with gender mainstreaming. We have several topics, but to, to come up with a topic, we have to brainstorm, we have to debate. And then through our debate and uh, brainstorming, that is when now we see the most important topic that we wanted to tackle or we wanted to put into the program of maybe this month, like if we are talking about this month, then that is how now we selected the topic. Uh, we have our listeners group who are now uh, the, the consumers of the content together with the community members. And from there now, where we, we get our feedback, we get our, our feedback from them. Due to COVID-19 situation now, we like, we, the, the product or the production we produce, we uh, send them through WhatsApp group to avoid, to avoid contact because when we, like when we call them the, uh, the listeners group, we are many. And that one will not be inconvenient because of COVID-19. So we have this WhatsApp group where they posted uh, what have been the community have been saying. We include, we in, incorporate all those uh, ideas, all those feedback from listeners group, from community members, from the leaders, and from the youth uh, groups. And then that will now guide us to the next program. Those feedback from the community is very important. That's why now we are growing and we are going ahead with the production. The program is not only uh, the target is the, the, the target is now the community. And in the community, we have women, we have children, we have youth, we have elderly women and elderly men. And then also we have persons with disability. So those are incorporated and we make sure that when we do a program, we include all those voices. The skill that I achieve through Sikika, it can be helpful in the society or it will help me in the future. Because when I go back to my community or to my country, I'll use that knowledge that I have acquired through Sikika program to be a news reporter and to tell the story of, of other people to the whole world. So I'm joined by the two lovely um, uh, people that you saw in the video who represent 12 content generators working from Kakuma refugee camp amid COVID-19 restrictions. And I will start off with uh, Mary, who can just tell us a bit about herself and then move on to Obang. So Mary, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm Mary Madut. I'm a South Sudanese. I'm a, I'm a South Sudanese refugee living in Kakuma and I'm working with the DW as a reporter and editor and also as a as a also like working closely to the community and it is very nice like working closely to the community and I'm really enjoying this work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mary. And now also Akune, who is also joining us from Kakuma Refugee Camp, but in a separate part of the camp, Kalobeye Integrated Settlement. And you have to acknowledge that it, it was difficult getting them into this space because it had just rained and it had flooded. The roads were all, you know, were all small rivers right now and we could not get to them, but he was able to join us right from Kalobeye Integrated Settlement. So Akune, welcome. Just tell us briefly about yourself. Hi, thank you so much for uh, inviting me. I am joining from Kalobi Settlement in Kakuma. It is part of uh, Kakuma, but it is a new settlement. Uh, it is just 25 kilometers from Kakuma refugee camp. So, as uh, Monica said, my name is Western Ethiopia Gambilla, and uh, currently I am here in uh, Kalobi Settlement. 
I am one of the content creator, content generator for Sikika Radio. I think I am one of the co-founder for this uh, uh, program. So uh, what we do is we, uh, uh, in our newsroom, we do editing, we, gener we sit down and talk and get idea on what to do for our program. So thank you so much. Thank you so much as well. So I'm going to let the AV team uh, play a pre-recorded uh, presentation about the Sikika project explaining how it was able to deliver life-saving information during a COVID-19 pandemic. In this session also, you'll be able to see how we were able to continue to provide life-saving information amid a lockdown on services triggered by COVID-19. Also with the session, we'll be able to hear from beneficiaries and their contributions to reducing anxieties and potential panic in the humanitarian operation when the pandemic emerged through radio program. For the Q&A session, Mary, who I've just introduced, will share her experience as a female journalist working in a constrained environment. So let me tell you briefly about Filmate. Filmate is a humanitarian and uh, development organization that harnesses the power of film, media, and the arts. Now, we use radio, film, journalism to strengthen the health and protection of refugees uh, by increasing the quality and the quantity of trusted, timely, and inclusive, engaging, life-saving information. We work in Dadaab and Kakuma refugee camps and the Kalabay integrated settlement, and these uh, camps house uh, refugees from the Eastern Horn of Africa, as well as the Great Lakes. These are refugees from countries like Sudan, Uganda, Ethiopia, and Burundi. Each year, we impact the lives of 400,000 refugees uh, living in the refugee camps, as well as in the urban areas, and also produce over 50 uh, pieces of uh, media on social change that we use to uh, uh, implement over 6,000 information campaigns. Now, these information campaigns are led by uh, community resource persons that are trained by Food Made, and we train about 140 of them every year. I will now speak a bit about the project. The project name is Sitika, and this is a Swahili word that means we had. It was a name selected by the beneficiaries of this project, and this project trains content generators and radio listener groups. These two groups of people are responsible for designing radio programs that are then intended to improve the access to information for refugees and host communities. But this project also fosters dialogue between the two groups so that then they are able to live peacefully and coexist. So how did the project fare on during the pandemic? Well, early on when the Kenyan political leadership announced restrictions on movement, gathering, suspending, even air travel, even into the refugee camps, Sikika was already meeting the information needs of communities by producing radio programs. But, you know, the program realized that it needed to provide timely, inclusive, and accurate information about COVID-19 because this was, a, was an environment that was heavily reliant on humanitarian services, even information services. So immediately, the program started to design and to disseminate audio public service announcements on COVID-19. This was identified as the best way to deliver information fast and effectively to the community. But to achieve that, coordination with government and the UN was quite important because at this time, there was very strict control on the type of information about the pandemic. It was necessary because it had to be very clear on what the public health laws were, as well as that, uh, what services were available and were being provided by government and different agencies responding during this time. However, in the absence of traditional uh, media sources like national TV, radio, newspaper, it became apparent that the Sikika project would have to step in in order to produce uh, relevant information in the right uh, languages. So for a short while, uh, Filimade had to divert its attention to and focus on producing emergency communication media. And so two public service announcements were produced in 12 languages, Nuer, Dinka, Dinka, Oromo, Amharic, Arabic, Swahili, English, Anua, Lingala, Somali, and French. And the productions were coordinated by the Ministry of Health, as well as the Refugee Affairs Secretariat and UNHCR. 
Now, it was apparent that uh, the introductory meetings made to these agencies and other relevant stakeholders at the inception of this project created the trust that we are able to deliver this uh, deliver emergency communication quickly and efficiently. So two weeks after the announcement of the pandemic in Kenya, radio public service announcements were being played uh, from vehicles with mounted public address equipment or broadcasted on FM, and this reached about 500,000 refugees and host communities in Gada and Kakuma refugee camps. Of course, necessary standard operating procedures were implemented during this time. Uh, we had to uh, train uh, the production teams and the dissemination teams on safety. We had to provide them with the necessary safety equipment, including masks and hand washing facilities uh, where necessary. And it was also quite important to you know, abide by some of the instructions issued by the Ministry of Health and Units here. For example, we could not converge more than five staff in a meeting in one in a room at any given time, as well as we could not have more than three teams or three individuals working in the studio during this time. So we were able to abide by some of these guidelines and this actually led to the success uh, in the delivery of this project. So some key takeaways from this process then were like, for example, being able to communicate clearly with authorities about the standard operating procedures uh, we would follow in order to secure the necessary permission to work under the restrictions. It was also quite useful to be involved in the coordination meeting because in this meeting staff, decision makers, uh, such as the Ministry of Health and Security Organs, as well as units here, and were able to secure as a decision making, sign off on the materials that we are producing as well. So that was just a brief um, introduction about Sikika project. And of course, during the Q&A session, you'll be able to you know, get, get a bit more in-depth information from Mary and Akune about their, their experiences in, in producing and also disseminating content during the COVID-19 restrictions. Over to the studio. <laughs> that was uh, handled quite smoothly. Thank you very much, Monica, for all that you've shared with us. Um, I mean, I get, I get a lot. It's, it's, it's interesting when you always talk about uh, content creators. There, there must be a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, uh, looking at a different kind of audience that you have even in the refugee camps and trying to do something that helps sort of put them at ease while going through all that they do at their camp. So uh, many thanks a lot. And I think when Jiku will get to our first question, if you allow me to go with the first one with this one. <laughs> Just, just before you go to the first uh, question, uh, Eddie, I just want to quickly remind everyone who is watching that the conversation is continuing and you should not feel that you're locked out now that the presentations are over. Please send in your questions through the app and we'll ask our experts right there. Eddie, take it away with the first question. <laughs> so actually, I was just, I had a question here and all of a sudden I'm seeing that the others are still sending their questions. So people are really listening to what you, what you just said, Wanjiku, because if you really have questions, you should send them. But I think I will first start with uh, Film Aid uh, uh, within Kenya. Um, that is, uh, my question is, how do you decide what kind of content uh, to provide for the refugees? What's, what's your process? So, Akune, do you want to take that? Yes, of course. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, thank you so much for that question. So our radio topics are informed by the information needs we get from the OS and the refugee community through the radio listeners group eight. We then the co content creator therefore collate and review all the information and Back. We 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 review the feet of people from a different background, uh, women, elderly, and prioritize the information in our editorial planning meeting. In which we also brainstorm, we pitch stories and ideas for our next uh, production. So the topic we covered are include but not limited to. <coughs> education, health, refugee services, 
and protection. Okay, okay. If anyone has uh, something to add, feel free. Otherwise, Wanjiku will take over. Yes, I quickly would like to uh, go back to Kamji as well, who are on the line and are part of this Q&A. And just to follow up on what Muthi had asked us before, how can we volunteer for this, for the project? I am an Arab journalist and would love to help in any way. Perhaps uh, the team in Lebanon could give us maybe two or three requirements, but also tell us where we can find more information. <laughs> Okay. Um, um, basically, uh, yeah, uh, being a volunteer is uh, is possible at Kamji at the center of Arizona, the NGO that is hosting the project Kamji. Uh, any information regarding this uh, could be found, uh, or uh, actually contacting us through the Facebook page. Uh, or uh, through the um, well, uh, probably Facebook page is best to send a message. Uh, if you type uh, MG as it was uh, painted on the um, portfolio, then uh, you will find the channel and then you can just uh, post this um, message and we will uh, uh, start the communication from there. Take over the communication. Okay. Well, Thank you, Nasir. Yeah, I have to say we apologize. So sometimes it's a little bit of a technical hitch, uh, maybe due to the internet connection. And so sometimes we lose it. But the good news, as Wanjiku said, is that if you need any clarification or further questions to be answered, all you have to do is interact with them on the app. So just one hour is just not what you got. You have all the time to further interact. Wanjiku, I'm going to move to another question. And I think this will really work with both uh, um, uh, presentations that we had, both for Kamchi and, uh, of course, for Film Aid Kenya. Talking about um, content. Now, I gathered this from, um, should I say, yeah, Kamchi, that you have this show, The Roof Show, which is a comedy show uh, that you uh, put on for these refugees. So my question to both of you will be, how important is it uh, for such programs, especially uh, relaxing comic shows like this for people in the refugee camp? Any of you can jump on it. Uh, okay, I've got uh, I've got here uh, the two the two uh, reporters who actually present the program they would like to answer and talk about the importance of this uh, uh, program for the refugees okay that would be great This program is different than anything else. We speak we speak about these issues in a very comedian way. We think it's a very important important program. Because it makes it gets it gets people in a very sensitive way. We try to get the message in a way which is more smooth, where we can laugh about it and be more relaxed. The subjects are very, very sensitive, but when we talk about it in a very easy way, we make it much easier to talk about it and make it much easier. It's very, very important for everyone and for us as well. Did, did the translation uh, <laughs> i think it's working for those listening but i'll still because i still want to understand if you can paraphrase everything for us keep it short for okay. us. I'll, I'll sum it up basically uh, omar was saying uh, uh, they they think uh, in in uh, times difficult times uh, during the covid 19 but also generally in difficult times uh, nowadays uh, in the world uh, comedy is even more vital than before and uh, it's a very way uh, very nice way to uh, transfer uh, information 
and uh, tackle sensitive topics through comedy because it makes people, uh, uh, engages people more and uh, it uh, transfers the message to a comedy way, which is, which is uh, uh, welcomed by uh, a big audience. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Wanjiku? Yes, we also have a question here that I think uh, applies to especially Mary and also uh, our woman journalist from Kamji. Uh, are there any gender specific challenges being a refugee female content creator or in, in Kamji's case, reporter? Um, I would love to hear first from Mary and then we go to uh, Lebanon. Okay. Mm, thank you so much for this opportunity. Yes, there are several challenges associated for being a refugee female content creator. The greatest challenge is that it is not easy to get an interview from the communities or experts because of gender insensitivity. They feel that the, they feel that you are wasting their time, and this makes it hard as a female content creator to get the best story. And sometimes I feel like giving up. And another challenge is that as a female content creator, it is not easy, especially here in Kakuma, because of social, because of society, because of social control by, by the society on women and girls and young girls. Women and young girls are not allowed to give or to express themselves concerning any subject matter. They cannot even make decisions by themselves. And this makes it hard for me as a female content creator to bring out their voice, their voices, or to champion out their voices. And another challenge is, it is that insecurity here in Kakuma. Because as a female content creator, I cannot go out alone and walk alone as a female content creator unless I'm accompanied by a male colleague so that he can protect me because uh, the female content creators are being attacked. So it is so hard and this encouraged other female content creators to work alone and this discourage many, many female content creators. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Mary. Perhaps uh, Ryan could also just jump in and uh, share her perspectives uh, as well on this question. What are some of the gender, if there are any gender specific challenges that you face as a citizen journalist um, in Lebanon? Uh, Hello. My story is a little bit different than my colleague. I feel it's much easier for me to be a girl. For me, it's easier to get with, with other women. In our society, it's harder for a man to get contact to a woman. So for me, it's easier as a woman to be, to be patient with them. It's more positive for me to be a woman, to be a girl. But how the society looks to girls working on this area is very, very nice, and people like the idea. And this makes me to be more encouraged to do my best. Every time to go to meet with someone for the meet for the, for the call, they ask me, where's the rest of the team? So I say, yes, I'm on myself. I'm very happy to be able to do this on myself, just alone, especially with recording. Some people ask me, why wouldn't you do another job? Why would you like to do cameraman? Or why don't you go to be a teacher or something like this? But I... I like to be doing this job and I explain it to the people. A lot of sentences you must need to translate. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. yeah uh, again, I'll just sum it up quickly. 
Uh, basically, Ryan was saying uh, she has a slightly different experience with uh, her as a female being a reporter, a journalist on the ground. Uh, it, it actually, she found some advantages, especially tackling female stories uh, where uh, male colleagues couldn't, uh, couldn't have easy access to female stories or female voices. She, on, on the other hand, uh, had a much easier access to that. So she found a big advantage for her in that, and uh, uh, she quickly adapted in that. But, but also when, uh, when covering general stories, uh, not, uh, not on females only, uh, she uh, always uh, liked that challenge, challenging the society. And uh, uh, as long as it's not uh, life-threatening, she would take that challenge and uh, cover stories even in a society that wouldn't easily accept her uh, as a journalist uh, because she's a female uh, uh, journalist in that uh, sentence. And uh, uh, yeah, even, even if she was producing a story on her own, uh, shooting uh, and uh, being a reporter of that particular story that was uh, uh, not an easy task but uh, uh, it, it was always connected to a big uh, challenge and achievement at the end of it. Thank you. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, she was just reminding me because she was mentioning uh, uh, when she's shooting, for example, alone, people would ask her, like, where is the cameraman? And she would tell them, I'm the camera woman. And that would, uh, would, would be a bit strange to them, like, uh, she would be also shooting and holding a camera. And that's, uh, that's something I forgot. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that translation. Eddie, yeah. I know you want to jump in here, but I have to say that the two ladies, Mary and Ryan, and of course everyone else has contributed so much, but these two particular ladies make me wish to get on the app and just keep the conversation going. Yeah. But for now, I'll just throw the ball to you, Eddie. Where are we going next? Yeah, I mean, Wajigu, um, I wish we had a chance for more questions. Maybe I'll ask a very quick one, but uh, just to add my voice, to the two ladies. I think I doff my hat off for them, more respect uh, for Budos in their way through such a male dominated uh, uh, area and, you know, still managing to do their work. It must be very challenging. So it's, it's really a lot of respect. But um, I have a, a quick question which should be answered uh, briefly. This goes to Sikika. Um, and uh, this is basically for Film Aid Kenya then. The question is basically, uh, how difficult is it to approach your topics with uh, diversity? Well, um, difficult, yes, but not impossible. Now, of course, all these refugees stay in a geographical area. They are forced because of um, different circumstances to stay in, in, a, you know, in an area. And so the needs are shared. The issues are, are, and concerns are the same. And so the editorial meetings look at you know, areas of convergence so that then they focus on certain issues uh, and actually are able to convert all those ideas into a radio program. Now we have also a number of radio programs to go around to produce in a year. And so you know, eventually we get to speak to each critical issue that has been raised. Uh, our content is informed by the wishes of the communities and these communities we collect this information from the 140 radio listener groups that we engage because these are the consumers of the content and so when this content is shared via whatsapp or via text message then the editorial teams are actually able to shift through all this feedback and actually have areas of convergence mm. I like the way you summarized that uh, pretty briefly. And that wraps up our Q&A session. I hope you all got clear answers to your questions. But if for some reason you did not, well, there is the chance for you to interact with our speakers on the app. So after this session is closed, you can definitely get back on and uh, get interactive. Wajiku, the conversation continues tomorrow. That's right, Eddie. And let me tell you why our session will become slightly more academic. A group of researchers, professors, and communication experts will discuss the topic, getting the word out. How can we improve messaging and communication in refugee contexts? Uh -huh. And as always, our experts will be ready to answer your questions. So you really don't want to miss out on what's going to happen tomorrow. And of course, the subsequent ones that are going to be coming up. Okay, so um, I guess this is where we wrap up Wanjiku. I am Eddie Micah Jr. And my name is Wanjiku Mwaura. Goodbye.